I'm Claudine Wong joining you from the San Francisco Bay Area and I am joined by Matt Sunboy who is the CEO of Fishbowl which is a really interesting place for all of us to kind of weigh in specific to our industries and uh, and the issues that affect us in those industries. Uh, Matt, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me Claudine. So let's talk about Fishbowl and really what right. it does. We're going to talk specifically about how teachers are using it right now but tell me just about the idea behind Fishbowl. Yeah, so really simply, Fishbowl is a social network that connects verified professionals and provides them the opportunity to discuss workplace topics anonymously. So the key point here, these are professionals who are verifying who they are, where they work, but because we're giving them an outlet to, to not disclose their name, they, they share a little more openly and candidly, and when it comes to surveys, answer more honestly. It's, it's interesting that you say, you know, you check too. So you're making sure yeah. that the people who are in here are really a part of the industry of which they want to weigh in on. Absolutely, and just to give you a sense, so depending on the industry, in the healthcare industry, for example, we check national provider identification numbers, NPI numbers, in the case of a professional, you know, if the work email can actually authenticate as well. So there's, there's a strict verification layer, so we have that, that veracity there, and then the, the anonymous mode gives a lot of uh, interesting and honest and candid opinions about topics you might otherwise not talk about on a network like LinkedIn. So I know you have a bunch of different groupings, right? You have right. one that's just for COVID. You have one, you know, for, you know, so many different, I, I don't know how many different platforms are you working off of yeah. people in different groups. So our roots are more in the professional service industry. So we have really big audiences. We're over a million now verified professionals. And then industries like consulting and accounting, marketing and advertising, finance, um, just recently, we launched, uh, we also have the education industry, of course, K through 12 teachers, and just in, just recently, we launched the healthcare professionals, too. Okay, so let's dig into teachers specifically, because I think that's been an area where if they didn't have a lot to say earlier, which we know that's an industry where there's certainly so much to talk about and so much sharing, the idea right. is, and I should ask you, is the idea that they're solving problems or venting or all of the above because it, it could turn into the water cooler per se can turn into a, a different place depending on the day right i mean the water cooler is really an apt metaphor particularly now where professionals don't have a common cafeteria to come and band together anymore so fishbowl and other networks of its type act as this digital water cooler uh, in a scenario where everybody's working from home the, the the conversation you know we get a lot of like there's a lot of very broad conversations twitter like but the, the specificity of industry by industry segmentation gives a lot of really interesting anecdotes where only another teacher can understand that that you know that story you share uh, from your student or only another consultant or only another you know physician and so that that brings a lot of relevance and detail that you get on fishbowl conversations you, may not, you might not see on other social media okay let's talk about specifically one of the big topics that I think probably a lot of educators and teachers specifically are talking about and it's this remote learning, this distance learning that we're all trying to do and trying to figure it out. And I, and I always feel for the teachers because they really weren't given any, any notice, right? It was like all of a sudden they were in class one day and then the next week they're like, you know, I mean, maybe they got a little buffer in a spring break if, if their district was in that calendar. But right. otherwise, you know, they kind of had to boom, make, you know, they had a day of planning and then all of a sudden all their students were online. And it is still a question I think will be analyzed on how how well it's all it's all working. You guys did a survey of folks um, and the teachers on your your teaching uh, platform for Fishbowl, and it was interesting. This is this is the survey of how many you know students actually right. attend these remote classes. Right. And to your point, I mean, there's a lo there's a lot of pieces here to the puzzle that will be analyzed as this shutdown extends itself. But at a very base level, we just wanted to understand, you know. Um, the ideas of absenteeism and how many students are showing up for the remote classes. So in our teachers industry, we specifically asked our teachers a, a question, how many of your students are attending your remote classes to get a pulse on that answer. Mm -hmm. And what we found is that, you know, nationwide, the majority of teachers, 55% uh, said that less than half of their students were attending. So, you know, that's a pretty drastic number. What's interesting though, is the numbers vary state by state. So when you look at a state like California, for example, 69% of California teachers said that less than half of their students were attending, and 44% said that, said that less than a quarter were attending. So you're getting some extreme levels of just like absenteeism or just not ability, inability to show up that's impacting ultimately, it's gonna have an impact on the, you know, the school system and the, the, education, the education of the, the kids as well. Right, it's interesting. I wonder why the states 
differ. And I and I and I don't I don't know if there would be something specific to each state to say why California would respond differently than Texas or New York. Or right. Oklahoma. I mean, yeah. so one, one one thesis could be, you know, depending upon um, the nature of the pro professionals, like their job types that they have, we have seen because we run a separate survey to our professionals. The, the biggest challenge that professionals are dealing with right now in balancing is juggling working from home with children in those cases where they have it. It's, it's it, you know, you see them behind me, I have a playpen for my kid. And yes. <laughs> it's, 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 it's really difficult to do. It, 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 and so, you know, depending on a state, you might have more professionals who, who gear towards that type, you know, maybe working for technology companies and uh, they actually ironically don't have the, you know, don't have the parental supervision to make sure that their kid is logging in. And this, this is backed up a bit by speaking to the teachers. When we ask them the question, why, you know, why are you seeing this? Yeah. Um, they broke it down to two phases. The first phase they said was during the first few weeks of the, the shutdown, a lot of it was technical and technological, particularly at you know schools, uh, Title I schools serving low income or perhaps uh, you know low household, you know low income household areas. A lot of those students don't have access to internet. They didn't have access to computers, and there was a bit of catching up to do. Where you know in some cases, internet service providers like in the state of Texas came in and outfitted homes for free with internet. So there was a lot of that kind of goodwill action happening. But more recently, you know, as the, the, the shutdown extended, pretty much all the teachers have shared that there, there is a basic lack of parental supervision happening. It's, it's undeniable. And they're also saying it's unrealistic expectations. You know, a lot of these kids, students are middle school, elementary school. They're not college students. They don't really have right. the ability to create their own schedules or manage their own schedule. So if you don't have that parent coming in and countering, count, counterweighting that a bit, it's very difficult. And you're seeing for that reason, a lot of no 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 show ups and it's impacting assignments as well so it's not just yes. attending they they've been saying the same in terms of lack of the assignments being turned in well and i think it depends on the the teacher in terms of their how comfortable they are and and if they want to do it on zoom and if they think that's effective or if they're trying to cut kids some slack and say do it on your own time you have the week to finish this or you know and, and i think that can be you know it, it's different. It'll, it'll be interesting to see if we have to do this online distance learning in the fall, how structured it becomes based on what we're learning now. And, and I, I want to pull up some of the comments and some of the things that people are mm -hmm. putting on. I know that you have to verify that they are teachers, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. in a school district. Then when they comment, is it anonymous? Correct. Or, so and that, it's that anonymous. It, it, yeah, it's anonymous okay. with context. So what happens is uh, when you comment or post, you post with an identifier that's not your name. You might post with the name the name of your school, or you might go more anonymous and just post with the type of teacher you are. So you'll see a lot of posts on Fishbowl being, like you see, a New York elementary school teacher. Yeah. We would have verified this person or this teacher through their you know their work district email associated with either their district or their school. And so that's the level of anonymity that, that gives them the comfort to you know just to speak a little more candidly. And on one note you just said actually that was interesting. There, you know, across the board, a lot of teachers have said that as this extends to the future, the shutdown, they are concerned about, you know, what this means in terms of, you know, uh, standards, right? Yeah. It's not realistic to think that uh, in a scenario where you have remote learning happening, that you can have the same entrance uh, state exam qualifications um, a, as you currently have. You know, that's going to have to be adjusted. They all said that most of them are reusing and reteaching old concepts versus introducing mm -hmm. new concepts for the exact reason, because it's very difficult for you know, students who are more hands-on or kinesthetic to, to, to teach in a visual manner using a screencast. And there's also a lot of the you know, fielding phone calls you know, in the evenings to try to compensate. So it's, it's very difficult for them right now. And particularly as, the, as the, the, the timeline extends, they're starting to realize some of these standards are gonna have to be adjusted on a state-by-state -state yeah. basis. Let's look at some of these other ones. I mean, do you find, I mean, how much do you guys monitor? I mean, you guys can obviously see all, all of these you know, discussions happening. This is also yeah. from another New York high school teacher. And, you know, has anyone done a math lesson on the growth of coronas? How did you put coronavirus? I should say, how did you present it? You know, is it being used in the way that you thought it would? Has it really, you know, kind of boomed in, in, in this coronavirus time? Uh, it has. The short answer is yes. Um, when we launched Fishbowl, and I think we let off with this idea of this digital water cooler, you know, even in a, in a state where you don't have a pandemic or an epidemic, 30 to 40% of the workforce is already remote, right? We, have, yeah. we see this scenario where more and more 
uh, professionals are working from home or on a, a, on a travel basis. So we've had that use case. We went from 30% to 99% you know, outside of essential workers overnight. And it was really interesting to see like the impact on, on, on a network like Fishbowl just hit immediately, like literally days within, yeah. they were just coming in. And, and I think more interesting though, you know, it's not about the numbers, it's about the content and the quality conversation. It's been really, really, really neat, I should say, or, you know, warming, I, you know, to see the conversations around work-life adjustments, around dealing with like juggling with your kids, you know, professionals coming and sharing in a, in a, in a manner that, you know, I think we're proud of at Fishbowl. There's a lot yeah. of like good content and, and good advice going around. Well, and even and I think this comment that we're looking at right now coming from Michigan Elementary School teacher feeling overwhelmed, you know, we are to contact our students to make sure they're okay. Districts need to make sure that teachers are okay. And I think right. that's, I mean, those are very fair, you know, feelings, you know, because because even though, you know, I have seen a great number of people saying, you know, we really appreciate our teachers more than ever, the people who are trying to teach their, their children at that home. Sometimes that doesn't make its way through the internet, you know, in terms of the everyday, you know, issues that they're dealing with. This one from Vermont, right? The hardest subject to teach remotely. Math would be right. hard. English <laughs> is hard. I mean, I think it's yeah. all, it's all hard and it depends on the, the student that you're trying to reach out to. It depends on that, you know, that face to face where you're trying to, um, trying to deal. And I think, you know, these last few that we're looking at, you know, the less appreciated from general ed teachers, how do you deal? I mean, there is this emotional component to what yeah. we're talking about in terms of how to, to navigate the space that we're in that makes it so it's a, a healthy place for people to to be. Right, I mean, I think particularly now at times, the anxiety is, is at a, it's a very high level. And, you know, I think it's what we've seen is there's a, a certain level of emotional support that someone who's been in your shoes you know, does the type of work that you do can offer that someone who can't. I come from a family of teachers, three of my sisters are teachers. When they have conversations between amongst each other, you know, they understand what each other do better than anybody else. And so I think what we see is a lot of that phenomena. It's just users and other professionals acting as a bit of a, a coping emotional support circle for, for each other. I should other. ask, what's not allowed? Because, you know, there right. have to be rules to the conversation. And, and certainly, uh, you know, in my industry, there are places where, you know, you're you're not all verified that you're all journalists they put mm -hmm. things out that aren't you know true yeah. you know and so where, where are the rules that that keep this conversation in the place it should be and not another right. place where people are you know for back, lack of a better word that you know they call the internet trolls or whatever they want to call them to mess up the conversation to be really just you know to change Abs it. absolutely and you know so we, have, so we have very strong opinions here that's built upon what's best for the community so at its core an app like fishbowl is is the communities we have over a thousand of them some of them are teacher based some of them are you know, finance professionals and so if it's not good for the community as a whole then it's 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 very likely going to be flagged and reported uh, i think specifically though what we put in is you know during times like this rumors and misinformation right very strict on those are we have a set of users who report these type of kind of poster comments if it's spreading misinformation um you know, toxicity for us is different than other networks. You know, anonymity is a privilege. And so we go out of our way to make it clear, you come to Fishbowl to be constructive, you know? So even something like excessive negativity, where, you know, if you had a laid off, for example, and this is gonna happen, here's an example, you're gonna have layoffs, and I hate to say it, and it's economic times. And so when that happens, there's gonna be a lot of disappointed people who wanna vent. At the same time, we wanna make sure the conversation is productive and constructive. And so if it delves into excessive negativity, that content is removed as well. We want to keep it productive and have a, you know, a positive outcome. Where does it go from here? I mean, what have you learned in terms of even the teacher space? Because I don't think that that, that fishbowl and that digital water cooler is going to probably calm down. I think it'll just start building, you know, in terms of just where do we go from here? Because the, the timeline and, you know, and even when the kids come back, you will see right. where the system maybe missed <laughs> missed a section, right? Especially I think with elementary school kids. Oh, we didn't cover that because we were trying to just get the basics and get them through. You right. Know, where do you see Fishbowl going and how do you further kind of expand and, and facilitate that conversation? Totally. So we're starting to see some of this right now. And what's interesting about our network is that we actually have a very strong um, cohort of users that are what you consider 40, 50 plus, meaning, you know, there, there are CEOs on the network who come in and just like read what their employees are saying, you know, get a pulse. 
But the reason why that's good is that a lot of conversations we're seeing now in industries like finance, consulting, it's starting to creep into like the education sector and teachers as well as how do we rebuild this, right? If, if there's going to be an impact here where, you know, a, a lot of a lot of standards, a lot of ways we've done stuff historically are being tore down. And if we're going to rebuild it, how do we do it right? And I think that's a role where Fishbowl can, you know, have have have, have a have a, a, a place for professionals to come, crowdsource with one another. What's a better way to do this? What's you know what's a, what's a better way to you know incorporate you know a, a more flexible work from home schedule where domestic responsibilities are being split equally, right? And that's an interesting topic too, honestly, where yeah. um, we've seen there's a, a tremendous amount of renegotiation happening amongst professionals at home. Of, who's responsible for what, because for the first time in a long time, uh, <laughs> right. I know that's happened here in my household too. So I, yeah. I think there's all these, uh, there's all these uh, nuances and ways of, that we've done things that we've just taken for granted that are being renegotiated and, and rethought of. And I think Fishbowl has a space to have that type of conversation. How many new people are you getting to sign up, you know, daily, weekly in, in terms of, especially in that, in that teacher segment, I, I imagine maybe it'll settle down a little bit when things hit summer but maybe maybe not you know i mean are you seeing that you talked about that growth pattern earlier you know about how many people specifically in education are saying you know what we can't go to the conference to maybe help right. out and granted this is not a place where we're going to be able to share powerpoint slides but right. if someone's got a good idea you know hey we'll take it over here yeah i mean so i mean fishbowl is a it, it's, it's a word of mouth sharing app right so people speaking with one another and so what, what's interesting even though people are working from home we're growing faster than ever, meaning they're sharing, maybe not physically <laughs> word of mouth, but the word of mouth is happening, you know, being shared in an email or an SMS. And so uh, what, what I can share is uh, we, we're growing faster than other, we, you know, our, 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 our growth from a week to week basis has tripled in terms of new signups. Yeah. Um, but we're not really looking at that. You know, for us, Fishbowl is a, it's, it's a long-term platform we invest a lot of energy into and we want to do it right. And so we're really looking at the quality and the content of the conversations are happening. And so when we look at that, that's what really excites us. A lot of amazing content, or I should say a lot of amazing conversations being started by, by professionals that hopefully can help, you know, help see the, see, see the way out of this, this, this thing for everybody. No, absolutely. I mean, we are in a, <laughs> a brave new world that we did not choose, but uh, that right. we are in anyway. And I think the, the digital water cooler and the teacher's lounge, both <laughs> digitally <laughs> help people get through this in however way we can do that. Uh, we are excited to see ways that we can do it together. So Matt Sindoli, Fishbowl CEO, thanks so much for your time and uh, for giving a place for teachers and educators a place to talk. Thanks for having me.